Hi there, this is Josh from Literary Gladiators, and today I am here with the eighth foodie book tag. Previously, I have complete, I have created and completed the cheese book tag, the cookie book tag, the butter book tag, the pasta book tag, the cannoli book tag, the sausage book tag, and the seafood book tag. And number eight is the soup book tag. Uh, Grace from Grace Libby actually uh, brought this up as an idea, which uh, she ins she told me that I should do more uh, foodie book. Uh, I should do more book tags centered around food, and uh, one of the ideas that she brought up was soup, and so I'm going forward with that. And I also want to shout out uh, my friend and fellow gladiator Charlie, who uh, we were going to do this together, but unfortunately uh, we had conflicting schedules, so uh, I will, though, uh, pay a visit to Charlie and have some of his delicious pasta visual, which I'm thinking about you, Charlie. But otherwise, uh, let's get right into the tag itself. Uh, the first one I, or in this case, uh, I have different kinds of soups. I have 11 soups in total and a description to go along with it that should connect to a book selection. The first one is chicken noodle soup, a family favorite. And my grandfather makes a delicious chicken noodle soup. Uh, it's one of my favorite things to eat during the winter. It's so warm and the Italian seasoning is just... Mm. But family favorite is something I don't have with me right now, but the book I would select is The Shack by William Paul Young. Uh, when I was in a... When I was back in high school, uh, all of us... Uh, decided that we wanted to uh, pick up and read uh, The Shack, which was uh, which had just come out at the time. It was in uh, trade paperback. And it's about a man's... Uh, a man reaches rock bottom and is invited to uh, visit a shack where he finds something uh, so heavenly uh, that it is uh, a complete uh, revelation for him, and it is very much uh, from what uh, the person that he's uh, talking about uh, really claims that it happened, which it, the question of faith begins to uh, kick in at that time. But my grandfather read it first, uh, then my grandmother, and then my grandfather told my mother that she should read it, which in turn I decided I wanted to get the book and read it. And my sister and father uh, followed along, and I'm sure that everybody else in the family uh, uh, decided that they were going to uh, join in too. Uh, so it made for quite a conversation. Next one is Tomato Soup, a cozy read. And for that, I chose Hanukkah Gilt by Eileen Schneider. Hanukkah Gilt is a well-put-together mystery. Rabbi Aviva Cohen is a protagonist like none before in a thriller, but at the same time it has that element where uh, Rabbi Cohen has this uh, casual uh, background, and we follow her. Uh, we follow her interesting everyday life, and I think that uh, this whole series is uh, something that I can uh, get cozy up to, read and zip right through, and enjoy. I let I read uh, Unleavened Dead as well, where. We can definitely see uh, how much uh, 
Eileen Schneider uh, enjoys uh, kosher cooking. Next one is Pasta Vajul, which is Charlie's absolute favorite. An anthology with many great writers and or stories. And for that, I chose Great French Short Stories, a collection that was edited by Paul Negri. After reading this, I began to uh, realize that I want to read much more from Emil Zola. I thought that the attack on the mill was a great naturalistic war story. It really was straight to the point about what war really is like. Voltar's Micromagus, which it's Earth from the point of view of beings from Jovian planets and moons, uh, which it made for something really thought-provoking, and it was quite uh, hysterical as well. Some other works, uh, some other uh, contributors include uh, Guy Dumas-Poussaint, uh, Gustave uh, Flaubert, Malto Falcone by Prosper Merimi explores some of my relatives uh, because there's mention to uh, uh, guards people uh, known as Caporellis, which Caporelli translates into corporal and uh, goes to show you my relatives uh, were military officers slash guards and Quite enlightening, too. So, I've got that going for it, too. Next one is Minestrone, which there's a picture of that right here. Five poems you would put in your poetry collection. And, well, my answer may change every so often. Uh, the ones that I would recommend to you, because I think that these five are quite remarkable, uh, all for different reasons. Uh, it would be The Starry Night by Anne Sexton, Dover Beach by Matthew Arnold, Self-Portrait Nude with Steering Wheel by Paul Darkin, Extra Naked by Nicole Lehner Montez, and Home Burial by Robert Frost. I think that's a great combination of poems that stick out in my mind and poets that stick out in my mind. Next one is Egg Drop, a work that is frequently misunderstood, and for that I chose the poem we went over on the pilot episode of our channel, and that is The Road Not Taken by Robert Frost. The Road Not Taken is often perceived, and even I perceived it, as being this work about making decisions and uh, the fact that one is going to come, that is that one is going to frequently be faced with multiple decisions that they need to make, and whichever one they choose is going to make a great difference, but whether it's a good or bad difference is to be decided. In actuality, it is, it's a satire on indecisiveness. It was inspired by Robert Frost and uh, an inter and his interactions with uh, an acquaintance of his, and how he was constantly uh, uh, regretting choices that he didn't make, or it was just how he was always uh, overthinking his decisions. And uh, Robert Frost decided to uh, write a poem about it, which. It really goes to show you that Frost very much thinks outside the box, and he is a poet like none other. Even in the modernist era, he was so much of a modernist that he was not a modernist. He was his 
he was his own genre, and that's what makes him quite remarkable. Next one is Fisherman's Soup, which is a Hungarian soup that reflects the fact that uh, Hungarians are very uh, passionate about their soups. Uh, that and uh, uh, goulash is another uh, Hungarian soup. But what work gave you a burning sensation as you read it? Because the paprika that Hungarians use in their soup makes for a spicy, hot meal. And uh, that was one of the great challenges on uh, The Amazing Race when uh, they came across a roadblock that required them to eat hot, spicy soup in Hungary. But for that, I chose Suffer the Children by John Saul because it always gave me that feeling of angst and uh, being on the edge of my seat because of the children that were frequently disappearing into uh, this uh, dark, hidden, secluded uh, area that we knew the details to, but the general population had no idea. And John Saul is known for creating that uneasy feeling. Next one is Gumbo, a Cajun delight. A work that makes you think of a party or a large gathering. And for that, I chose The Fellowship of the Ring by J.R.R. Tolkien, but I think that in a lot of uh, occasions uh, in Middle-earth, especially in Bag End, uh, they just throw outstanding parties. Uh, the uh, the par uh, Bilbo Baggins' uh, 11st birthday was quite something. Uh, it was the whole... Uh, the fireworks and all of the uh, festivities that took place. And then in The Hobbit, where... Uh, Gandalf and the dwarves, when they first come to Bilbo's place, uh, they have quite a nice feast, and they eat. That, that is something that is to be enjoyed, most certainly. Next one is Wedding Soup. And the question to that is, what is your favorite literary marriage? And for that one, I chose David and Elizabeth Beck, from Tell No One. I feel that David and Elizabeth always embrace their passion and desire for one another, and it seems like the two of them have such a connection that they, they're not just a, a married couple that loves one another, but they're also best friends, and the fact that when Elizabeth goes missing and David is looking endlessly for her, he really demonstrates such a remarkable passion. And I feel for him, and I have a really easy time rooting for him. And I think that this marriage that we got a sense of how they're like together and that longing from, from what they're like apart. It's just very well put together. Next one is vegetable soup. What do you read to exercise your brain? And for me, I'm, gonna, I'm choosing uh, any kind of puzzle books. Uh, here is... Uh, Logic puzzles, uh, classic logic puzzles, and uh, there are several uh, contributors. And I also have these uh, magazine. These uh, I I also have these puzzle books, uh, variety puzzles from Penny Press and Logic Problems, uh, the a uh, British edition. Uh, this one's in particular is the British edition, but. I have a good time uh, going through the uh, 
logic problems and uh, working my way through them. Uh, for example, uh, they give you a uh, they give you a situation and different uh, people, objects. Uh, it, in this case, it is uh, people, weapons, and uh, other implements, and they give you uh, clues of deduction where you have to uh, check th x things out, and then when you can confirm something, you put a little circle there. And those are quite fun. I think that I need to do them a bit more often. Next one is pho, which is a Vietnamese soup that is served on the streets. It's street food the way that in New York they serve hot dogs. And that and for this, a book you would take to the streets to promote. And for that, I'm gonna choose a Dark Horse candidate in Sleepwalkers by Nicole Laner Montez. Because one, I feel that people need to read more poetry and short works. Two, I think that people need to read more authors and writers, and in this case, poets, that they are not as familiar with. And three, I think that uh, Montez's poetry really makes an impact. Next one is Duck Soup just like the Marx Brothers film from 1933. And that is an absurdist gem. And the gem that I chose is one of my all-time favorites, Alice's Adventures in Wonderland and Through the Looking Glass by Lewis Carroll. I think that there are so many uh, occasions where things make absolutely no sense, but when you look at it, what does it really mean to make sense? And if thing, and if practices in this world make absolutely no sense, what makes ours any better? The idea for I think one of the greatest examples is Humpty Dumpty celebrating unbirthdays, where. You only get one birthday a year. An unbirthday, you have either 364 or 365 of them. Isn't that something to think about? In this world, definitely. Next one is Soup Kitchen. What is your favorite soup? As I mentioned earlier, uh, my grandfather's uh, chicken noodle soup is absolutely delicious. I'm really looking forward to it this winter. And I also enjoy any soup that I can get at a, uh, an Italian restaurant that I enjoy going to called Il Giardino Solmare, which translates into English as uh, the garden by the river, which we usually just call it Il Giardino. But their soup dishes, uh, they come out with Eggplant soup, zucchini soup, red pepper soup, broccoli soup, mushroom soup, and it's pureed, which is so smooth and savory and delicious. Looking forward to having more. And the last one is the all-you-can-eat special. Who do you tag? I usually tag ten people in the foodie book tags that I put together. But this time I'm going to do 13, because it's been a while since I did a foodie book tag, and hopefully it uh, uh, picks up interest, which I plan on doing uh, several uh, foodie book tags uh, in the upcoming months. I'm even planning a group foodie book tag. In this case, I'm going to tag uh, Peter from Peter Clark the Writer, who did an outstanding job uh, doing all of my foodie book tags uh, 
during an entire week. Uh, he had already done one of them, so he did the other six. Uh, Alyssa from Sushi, from Sushi Dragon Master, who also does a great job uh, completing these and keeping up. Grace from Grace Libby, another one. Uh, Steve from Steve Donahue, who would probably not be very happy if I didn't tag him. And I'm also interested to hear what he has to say. Amy from From the Dusty Bookshelf. Janelle from The Page Turner. Eleanor from Smell Your Books. Britt from Britt. Ryan from Madman Reads and Rocks. Grace from The Music Snob. Jack from Jack the Bibliophile. Courtney from Pickles Reads, which she did the sausage book tag and actually cooked a sausage dish while she completed it. And it really made for a great twist to the foodie book tags. And Katie from Pumpkin Latte Lover. Thank you for tuning in to this soup book tag. I hope you uh, have an appetite to... Grab a uh, nice bowl of soup when you are done here. I have the urge myself. And, for all, and as always, I encourage you to keep reading. Charlie's, uh, his family, they make a really good soup. So, thought I'd share this. When? Uh, oh, absolutely. Thank you. And here, here's Charlie. Hi. I'm Getting actually, ready. Uh... All ready. Maybe I'll we'll put a picture of the drums up later. Eh, we'll see about that. All right. All ready. Let's eat. Enjoy. I love eating.